Greetings, Saber X. Here with John Solomon. We are discussing uh, some uh, real weapons and, and kind of influences on, on, on our system and stuff like that. And I busted out this big guy here. This is a Bagua doll. Um, Bagua is a art which we take some stuff from. I we put out a video on, on the walk there. Um, it's done mostly done in circular patterns. Um, it's considered an internal martial art like Tai Chi um, because you're not really focused on superior strength or anything like that. Um, but this is a weapon which um, is very famous for that, for that art. Um, and as you can see, it is very large. Um, I don't have a normal size one of these to compare, but I can, uh, of course, throw some, some photos up uh, a little bit later. Um, <clears throat> Its purpose is not necessarily to be a weapon weapon, right? We're not necessarily supposed to think that we're going to go in and chop people with, with this thing because it is, it is very heavy. And as you can see, you'll see from some of our other conversations here, um, it's weighted out here um, and it's purposely done that way. This is basically a strength training tool. It's just, it's just you know, weight weight train, okay? Um, we were showing, we can show holding it up like this, keeping it up through through the arm and and shoulder will definitely help strengthen that, that apparatus. Um, the way that it's used because um, Bagua is a barehanded martial art, this is really supposed to be training your body and not necessarily the weapon here, okay? So, um, here, I'll show, have you demonstrate here. So if he just holds it kind of out here, and it is intended to be used one-handed, although you can sometimes just place your hand right here for an assist, but generally speaking, it's, <laughs> you know, teacher will be upset, right? But as you can see here, and if you just kind of, kind of get back, get into a nice comfortable stance, as you can see here, you can really feel the, ooh, <laughs> you know, that tip, that tip really being drawn down, and that's going to kind of accentuate this. Now, if you go up into one of the guards, you know, yeah, there you go. All right, same weight distribution, but a totally different feeling here. We've got more effort going in here. Now, actually, can you turn you around so you can see here? Here's the important part with if you're if you're going to get one of these or you're going to start fooling around with heavy weapons, this is an important part. Notice how his shoulder does not rise up towards his ear. Okay, so go go around, go back around and go to the other side. There you go. Okay, so you see he's still got space between his ear and his neck. Right. We don't want shrugging up there, which is what will happen if you get a weapon that's too heavy for you and you try to lift it up. Right. And you see that all the time. So people bring it up and they, uh, right, because they're really trying to hype the thing up. There. Now, right, now, one of the exercises that, that, was, that was a cruelty for me when I was learning is, and I'll let, I'll let you do this one here in that direction. Okay, hold your saber up toward the, toward the camera there. Now, we're going to do the same kind of makashi drill. Keep the tip steady and move through those those positions. So starting there, go up to that position, then go to the other one. There you go. Good. Right. Okay. Now, <clears throat> I'll do it here with the lightsaber since it's nice and light. <laughs> right. As I go this way, I'm going to shift my weight that way. And then as I go this way, I go here. Right. Hundred and eight repetitions. <laughs> right. Now don't let your feet slide um, here. Right. Use the use the stance in there. there. Yes, it's, it, it, yeah, it gets it gets awful. And yes, switch hands. It's totally cool to switch hands. Okay. It's worth the weight. All right, there you go. 
And there, there comes in another thing. If you're trying to catch up one side of the body to the other, if you do an exercise like this, just for every repetition you do on one on your strong side, do two on the on the weak side, you'll be good. Yes. So, yep. So as you can see, it's <laughs> it's not it's not a comfortable thing to wield. No. Right? Um, and yeah, I suppose you could turn it into a real weapon. You'd have to be pretty meaty, you know, to, to lug this sucker around. Because um, even like Nodachis and, and all that kind of thing, or Miao which have a much longer blade, but they're not this heavy and they're not this more weighted, and most of the time you're holding it kind of like there. Um, this here too, we've got, I mean, it goes right, all the way from those which people will find familiar to and so on and so forth over and over and over again. Again, there's lots of forms for these, and you notice some of them will be performed with, if you see the blade flopping around, don't be too impressed, because <laughs> it's a light one, <laughs> right? So a lot of the competition ones, a lot of the demonstration ones you see are, are light, um, but they're meant to be heavy. Um, there you go. So if you're busting around on the internet and you want to check out some of the uh, our, uh, some of the stuff that uh, inspires our stuff, uh, go ahead and look up Bagua Dao, D-A-O, or Bagua Saber, um, that's this thing here. There is Bagua Jian, which is a little bit more functional, um, depending on what school you're, you're, you're looking at. But uh, this is a very interesting uh, weapon because it is, um, used as something kind of more than a weapon in that it's a strength training tool and it's a body mechanics tool keeping that shoulder down being able to use your waist and not using wrist or elbow using shoulder chest shoulder, and all that kind of thing to uh, to move this around so you don't get into the that thing which will <laughs> destroy you anyway so uh, hope you found that interesting. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks to John for joining me. We'll see you next time. Happy Sabering. Happy Sabering. <laughs>